that too. You know, and so I think for him it really did boil down to, I, I think he really believed that Abacus was guilty. I don't think he was so cynical as to believe that this there wasn't a case here. Mm -hmm. But I think his judgment about this case was so clouded by his own ambition to be the guy that prosecuted a, sm a bank related to, to the 2008 crisis that that was important to him. And as Matt Tybee says, if you're gonna pick on a bank, picking on a bank located between a couple of noodle shops is, is probably the easiest way to go. <laughs> you know, that financial crisis impacted so many people. And I feel like this is one of these stories that probably doesn't get told or seen. No. And there's many of these kinds of stories, I'm guessing that might have happened uh, in, in a different variety, but in a sense. But how important is it for you to to actually bring this to light, because we hear about the big, you know, the bigger stories, the, the ones that get, sure. you know, the sure. attention, we, but this doesn't get attention unless you're in that community. You no, know? no, uh, you're right. The big banks, I mean, the story of, of the 2008 crisis was a huge story, obviously. Oh, yeah. Um, and, and rightfully so. I mean, they nearly crashed the world economy. <laughs> uh, so that was deservedly covered, you know, ad nauseum. Um, and of course, it was nause nauseous what came out of it, which was no prosecutions. Right. But, but in this case, you're right. It's a small bank. It's low-level fraud, and I suspect that there was a feeling that it didn't rise to the level of, of being that important. I think that a lot of the press missed um, what I think was signif really significant about this, which is is that against the backdrop of big banks who were not prosecuted what went on here is vitally important to know about. Um, because it really is a story about the unequal application of justice in America, and what makes this different from most of the situations where that happens is the fact that this was a family that had the means to fight back. Mm -hmm. They're not poor, like most people who are on the wrong end of the justice right. system when it comes to uh, the application of justice. This is a family that said, no, we are not going to roll over. We're not going to plead and make it go away. We're going to fight. And that's part of what makes this such a significant story. I read a reviewer, a very positive review of the film, but they said something about this is about a footnote of the 2008 crisis. And I, I couldn't disagree more. I don't think. I think it, it, it was at risk of becoming a footnote. Mm -hmm. But I like to think that our telling of this story and the fact that this film has has gotten as wide a play and impact in the culture as it has, has made it more than a footnote. Mm -hmm. Because these people are direct imp directly impacted. You know, it's it's a clear sign where this is these lives are changed and you can see these are the people. It's it's like the immediate kind of effect. Instead of something where you're like, well, it goes through all these like different hoops, and it's like you can't relate. This is very relatable because it's direct impact to these direct people, and it really is changing in so many sense to the, to the community, culture, and individual people. Right. Uh, I mean, the irony here is is that the, what the big banks did had a profound and awful effect on a lot of people. A lot of people lost their homes, mm -hmm. their life savings. A lot of people um, who even lived in apartment buildings lost their homes because the apartment building went under. Um, so this is a situation where the, what the big banks did had very real, lasting, damaging impact on the economy and on people's lives. What Abacus did had no negative impact on the economy or the people they served lives. They had the lowest, one of the lowest default rates in the entire country, as one of their lawyers says at one point. If all the banks had acted like Abacus did, we wouldn't have had a mortgage crisis. Mm -hmm. So. The, the, the real sort of awful impact of this situation would have been if they had been found guilty and this bank would have gone under. Because then people would have been profoundly impacted in the community with the loss of advocates and it would have been all due to our justice system. So it's like, it's like, a, it's like looking through the um, you know, Alice in Wonderland looking glass between the big banks and abacus. Everything is upside down and backwards and wrong. Yeah. You know, I feel like I, I followed your work uh, for, for a long time, and I was actually, I remember uh, the first time I, I saw Hoop Dreams, um, and it was my professor's 
uh, Michael Smith, he's a local filmmaker, and um, just like, we watched it multiple times in class and discussed it, how, how big even things locally, right around our corner are, but we don't get to see certain things, because right. they're hidden. Um, how much pride, in a sense, do you take to, to show these stories? That if these are things that we probably pass by certain right. people, and you never know the struggle and the real story that is behind there, that is so rich and just like, in, in exposing to everyone and making everyone aware and just better, in a sense. How, how important is it for you to, to go in deeper and, and find these stories that are almost really in front of us, but we don't look at? Well, nothing gives me more satisfaction um, as a filmmaker than telling stories of people who are find themselves on the margins of American society in some way, whether it's poverty, race, ethnicity, um, and 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 making those stories public in a way because they have something larger to say about the world we live in. So that's something I love to do. Um, you know, I've done other kinds of films that, like the Roger Ebert mm -hmm. film, sure. uh, about someone famous, but, uh, and I felt truly honored to tell that story on any number of levels, but I, I do get probably the greatest satisfaction in telling the kinds of stories that people are not inclined to know about or hear about, or maybe even think there's a story there. Um, because I feel like that's kind of my mission as a documentary filmmaker. And, you know, I'm sure you've encountered <coughs> doing all these films and, and coming across so many stories. Is there anything that kind of stands out to you um, looking back uh, that, wow, I made this impact, or did someone come to you even like, hey, this really changed my life uh, right. in that way where, where you didn't even almost realize how much of an impact it had on it? Well, you know, I've... I've um, been fortunate enough to have my, um, you know, made, having made enough films over the years, uh, or a lot of films over the years, uh, of having <clears throat> you know, people tell me that the films impacted them. And, you know, when you go to a film festival or you run into someone at a screening or you meet someone, you know, and they find out, you know, that you're a filmmaker and they know some of your work. <clears throat> You know, I've been very fortunate that I've had, I've certainly gotten plenty of love in that way from people who said it really impacted me. Um, so I, I, I believe that films can absolutely affect people in profound ways and change them because it's happened to me. I mean, films have done that to me. Uh, larger change, sometimes you see that. Um, you know, that's a little more uh, amorphous and, and harder to, to know for sure what kind of greater impact your film has other than sort of changing hearts and minds, but I'm, I'm happy with changing hearts and minds. You know? Is there anything that you kind of look at when you go into a film that stands out to you in a sense like, this story should be told, which is some that may be like, well, not sure there. Is there any type of thing that you almost that presents itself in the sense um, that you know immediately hits you like a sure. light bulb moment where like this story needs to be told. Um, it's, yeah, with me, I don't generally, and I'm not sure if I've ever. Well, I wouldn't say ever, but I, I don't generally come up with some theme I want to explore, and then try to figure out well where's the story to, to explore that theme, you know. Uh, I, it, I, it's not like I was casting around for, I want to do a film about the unequal application of justice in America. Oh, this is a good story. Or when I did uh, at the Death House door, I had, I had feelings about the death penalty, but I wasn't like dying, you know, bad word choice. I wasn't ch champing at the bit to mm -hmm. do a film about the death penalty. It was when I heard about the story of Carol Pickett in that film, or the story of Abacus in this film. Um, I fall in love with and get intrigued and compelled by the story or a person or what they're going through. That's where it starts. And then what I've discovered over the years is that some of the larger implications of what's going on in their lives are part of what I think engage me. 
but it's not always like immediately evident, even that. It's not like, oh, this is going to be symbolized this. I don't, I don't, I tend to get compelled and fascinated by people who are going through a significant moment in their lives often, and I just want to follow it and see how that impacts them in the moment. And, and then, but then other themes emerge from trying to tell that story. I think they're looking for us to wrap this up, right? Is that what they keep poking at? Laura must be ready. She must yeah. be ready. I think you want to talk to Laura, right? Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So I'm going to kind of finish you've up. A good, you've gotten a good bout with me here. Definitely. Uh, I guess on a final note would be now since uh, this film is nominated, any other films that kind of stand out to you, uh, documentary films that really kind of impacted you this year, that you've seen in the past year that really... Um, that you've enjoyed or, or like sure <coughs> well some of them are nominated um, I think Strong Island is a really um, incredible film mm -hmm. um, very personal hard film to have been to have made for for Yancey Ford um, uh, who worked on that film for something like nine years um, I think Last Man in Aleppo is a is a pretty extraordinary uh, brave film uh, about what's going on in Syria. Um, I loved Quest, which is a really underappreciated film, uh, I think. Uh, it, it, was a, yeah. it, was, it was a powerful film about a family where the filmmaker committed 10 years of his life to telling that story. So mm -hmm. those are three good examples. Great. Well, I'm looking forward to, I'm rooting for you to, nice. to get that Oscar win because you've done such great work over the years and, uh, you know, stories that I wasn't even aware of that really kind of impacted me too. So, uh, Thank you. tremendous work. Thank you. Thank you so much. Steve James. <laughs>